Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video I'm going to do something a little different. I'll be introducing you to a new app called Layout Designer and the corresponding Swift Xcode package called Collection View Paging Layout that'll help you spruce up the layout and presentation of content in your iOS apps. Before I get started, please leave a comment below if you enjoy the video, and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to be notified of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If this is something you want to learn, keep watching. Now before I get started, let me show you where we are starting from and where we're headed. I'm going to start with this starter project, and you can download it from the link in the description below. It's a very basic layout and design of the list and detail view, and it's pretty typical of how most of us start with our Swift SwiftUI application design. You have a list of elements displayed in a list, and when you want to present the detail, you use a navigation link to present the detail view. I'll go through the code in just a minute, but first, let's see where we're headed. The first thing I'm going to do is refactor the app to instead use a horizontal scroll view that slides through the images and then, when selected, presents the detail right on the same screen. This is better, but not necessarily ideal. The real purpose of this video will be to introduce you to Layout Designer and the Collection View Paging Layout Framework and implement it into your own project so that you can change this into something like this. Or this. But first, let's rewind a bit and go back to the beginning. This app is using a slightly condensed version of the MPVM architecture to connect data to the screen. In the content view, there's a navigation view that presents a list of items. And these items are stored as a published property of the view model, and when content view appears, the items are fetched. In the fact list view model, the items are just a static array of fact objects that the fetch method assigns to the facts array used in the content view. You'll see the purpose of the selected fact function in just a minute. The fact object itself is a struct conforming to the identifiable protocol with a UUID ID property and a number of strings, one of which is the image name. And this references the names of one of the image assets stored in the assets catalog. Now back in content view, because fact conforms to the identifiable protocol, I can use that to loop through each fact in a list to present the image and title in the list as a navigation link that passes both the selected ID and the view model itself onto the detail view. Now you may be thinking, why am I passing in the ID and the view model instead of just the fact? And indeed, I'd normally do that if I were to use this version of my code. But since I know where I'm headed, the Swift package that I'm going to be finishing with requires the ID, so that's why I'm doing it this way. In detail view, I display the image that is a simple 300 by 300 rectangle with an overlay of the photo credit in the bottom right, along with some further information displayed below it. Now, since I pass in the ID and the view model, I'll need to determine what the fact is. So that's where I use that selected fact method in the view model to extract the fact so that I can access its properties. Again, this is not normally how I do this, but you'll see why shortly. And also for you MVVM purists, I'm taking some shortcuts here by using the fact model itself here, rather than a corresponding view model fact. So let's go about improving this solution by first using a horizontal scroll view. So the first thing I'm going to do is to replace this list view with a horizontal scroll view. So let me cut this list view out and start with that horizontal scroll view. Inside the scroll view, I want to display an H stack with a spacing of 20. And inside the H stack, I'll use a for each loop to display just the image. I'll make it resizable and a frame of 150 by 150. Now I want to embed this scroll view inside a V stack and add a spacer to push it up to the top. Let's also add some padding. 
Now what I want to happen now is that when I tap on one of these images, I want to display my detail view below it. For this then, I'll need to know what the fact is that I have to use, and since I'm headed eventually to my final solution, I'll pass in the ID and the view model. So how do we select an item? Well, I can use an on tap gesture on our fact item in the for each loop. And within the code block, I can store the current fact ID in some property. So in order to be able to change the item tapped, I'm going to have to create a state property called selected fact ID as an optional UUID, because when the view loads, no item will be selected. And then with the tap gesture, I can assign the fact ID to it. Well, now that we have this selected fact ID, we can present our detail view in our V stack, but only if the selected fact ID is not nil. And we'll do that right prior to the spacer in our V stack. If we test this now, we see even in the preview, I can scroll through the happy facts and tap on one of them and display the detail below it. I don't like the fact, however, that when the app launches, there's a blank image. So if I want to start by displaying the first item in the H stack, I can set it after the fetch has occurred and then select the first fact from the array and its corresponding ID. Now I think it would be actually better to move this current item then to the view model and make the assignment part of the fetch method. So in the view model, it won't be a state property, but rather a published one so that our view can observe it and adjust accordingly. So let me copy this part from here. And then back in fact, this view model, I'll create that published property. And then once the facts have been fetched, I'll assign the first fact ID to the selected fact ID. Of course, this means that we'll now have to address the view model in content view to access that property. Also, we'll no longer need to assign it here in the onAppear method. Now, if we resume our preview, we see that it loads that first object on first launch. I think that this is looking better already, but I would really like it if when I scrolled, my image would stop at the center and then let me know what item is at the center and update the detail view accordingly. Unfortunately, in SwiftUI, there's nothing yet, as of the time of this recording, any way to do that easily. There are all sorts of suggestions for accomplishing this using a geometry view and a lot of math. In UIKit, we can use a collection view, and there are delegate methods to help you out. Unfortunately, that's not easy to expose to SwiftUI yet. And if I were in UIKit, in the past I would have used Nick Lockwood's iCarousel. This is a fantastic class to simplify the implementation of various types of carousels, page and scrolling views on the iPhone, an iPad, and a Mac. It's written in Objective-C and there are all sorts of tutorials available to show you how to implement it in a UIKit project. Up until now, I wasn't aware of anything like this for SwiftUI. And then I discovered an app and a package written by Amir that not only works with UIKit, but also for Swift UI that has a lot of the same options. So for my final refactor, let me take you through adding it to your project. It all started when I saw this tweet by Amir Korsandi, a software engineer living in the Netherlands. It sounded really interesting, so I went to the GitHub page here, and I found that this has both an app called Layout Designer and a Swift package called Collection View Paging Layout or paging view for SwiftUI. The app, Layout Designer, makes it easy for you to build your custom layouts and allows you to tweak many of the options and see the results in real time before you decide to implement it in your code. It also generates the code for you so that you can just copy and paste it into your project. Now, you can build the app yourself from the source code that he provides that it too is open source, but as I always like to support developers who create such useful tools, I purchased the app from the App Store. 
The framework itself doesn't contain any external dependencies, and I'll show you how I implement it using Swift Package Manager in just a minute. But first, let me walk you through Layout Designer a bit. The app has a really straightforward interface. You can switch between transformation types like Stack, Scale, or Snapshot on the left screen. In the center screen, you're shown a representation of the paging view for the selected transformation. And you can simulate a scroll or swipe by tapping the arrows or on adjacent cards. You can also switch between a variety of different types for displaying your content. As you tweak the options, the center pane updates the content accordingly. The right pane displays the code that you'd use to implement it in either UIKit or SwiftUI. If you make no changes to the options, the Layout Options property is pretty straightforward. And the options can also be viewed in the Options segment of the code if you want to copy them. If you make some changes to the default options, you see some dramatic changes. There's a convenient copy code button along with another button that will save the example as a fully functional Xcode project so that you can open it up and check it out there. For my example, however, I'm not going to copy the code entirely, but rather walk you through a couple of simple implementations because it's always the same. You'll need an array of identifiable objects, a transformation view options property, the type of which changes depending on the transformation type selected, and then within the body of your view, you'll embed whatever you want displayed within one of the paging views that can either be a stack, scale, or snapshot view. So it's important that your option types match as your transformation type. Then you apply the options modifier containing your options, and then apply any page padding you may want to have. Now there's one thing missing here that Amir answered for me when I reached out to him. And that is the way in which I know which of the items is at the center point. So keep watching and I'll show you. Let's get started. I'm going to start with this simple scale transformation with the linear option. The first thing that we'll need to do is to use Swift Package Manager to add the repo to our project. So make sure you have the project open and from the File menu, choose Swift Packages, Add Package Dependency, and paste or type in the URL for the repo. Click on Next, and then Next again, and then Finish. Our Content View is where we want to implement the view, so we'll import Collection View Paging Layout here. As I mentioned, we're going to need the Options property. So let's return quickly to Layout Manager and copy it from here. Let's remove that scroll view right now that was in our previous solution. And instead, as we see on Layout Designer, we'll want to use a Scale Page view. So I'll copy this and use that to replace our scroll view. Now, we don't have an array of items. Instead, we have an array of fact list view model facts. And we can call the iterator fact instead of item. Now, what I want to use is the image with overlay from my old detail view. So for this, I'm going to have to cut it out of there. And I'll paste it in here. Of course, we no longer need to have that selected fact method to determine the fact because we have it. So I can replace this just with fact. And we'll also no longer need the coalescing option because we no longer have that optional ID. Make sure your canvas is in preview mode or else you won't see the screen. And we can see that it displays and in fact, if we scroll, we see the image changing with some kind of transformation, but not the one that we expected. And this is because we have yet to add the options modifier to our scale page view. 
still isn't quite right. So if I return to the layout designer, I see that I still need to add the page padding modifier. Well, this is looking pretty slick, but there's still something wrong. When I switch images, my detail is not being updated. And this is because I failed to notice that there's a second property, optional property for our scale page view that is bound to another property that is assigned to the identifiable property of our item that we're iterating over. And that's our selection. So this is the one that's in our view model and it's called selected fact ID. So by passing this property into our scale page view each time we move to a new image, it'll update and our view will refresh, passing it along with our detail view. And since it's a binding, we have to make sure that we add the dollar sign. Now, as we scroll right and left, the detail view changes to the one in the center. And you'll notice as well that it snaps to the image to the center of the screen. This is exactly what I was looking for. That's it. Wasn't that easy? And you can see why in my original version, I never passed the full fact to our detail view. I need the ID. So before I let you go, let's return to our layout designer and get the options needed to display a different kind of transition. So let me choose a stack transformation with vortex. And the only thing that I have to change in my content view is the option and the page view type. So for options, I'll need the stack transformation view options with type vortex. And for the page view, I have to change it to a stack page view. Testing now, I can resume the preview and I get an entirely different look. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the collection view paging layout package and hope that you'll consider supporting Amir and purchase his layout designer app from the App Store. Thanks for watching.